<laughs> Sarge on the board. Hi, Ardeef, my sister, is <clears throat> on the board. Hi, my brother, Rico, is on the board. And we have a total of 10 board members, and with it being a weekend and all that, some of the other board members couldn't make it. One of the board members is probably actually uh, online. We're live streaming this. And um, just wanted to, uh, again, welcome everyone here. Who are the caregivers and who are who are caregivers here? I applaud you all. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a hard job, trust me. Been there, done that, so I know. Um, and just a little bit of background and then we'll get into, then I'll introduce John and we'll just um, let it flow. And then after John talks, I'll talk and then we'll um, answer any questions that you all have. But um, again, I'm Vanitra. I was a primary caregiver for my mama, Frankie Mae, who the foundation is named after. Um, she had Alzheimer's. And so my husband and I were her primary caregivers. So you caregivers, you all know it can be challenging. It can be rewarding. You have days you want to cry your eyeballs out. And you have days you just go and laugh and just have a good time. And so while I was taking care of mama, it was just on me that once she was no longer with us, I needed to do something to help other caregivers. So out of that, Frankie Mae Foundation was born. Um, she passed away in September of 2020. And I needed some time just to regroup, just get myself together emotionally. And so last summer, I ran it by my sister and my brother and, you know, just told them my idea. I had no idea what it would look like, but I just wanted to do something to help other caregivers. So in July of 2021, filed a paperwork with the state. And then in October, I filed a paperwork with IRS. And I'm pleased to announce <laughs> this month we got our 501c3 certification. So we are officially certified 501c3 nonprofit. So with that comes a lot more responsibility and a lot more, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an accomplishment and I'm proud of all the work that the board has helped me with to get to this point. And um, so in November, it was actually Rico's birthday, we, did, we started a fundraiser. And my crazy goal was from November 20th to December 31st, I wanted to raise $10,000. And I knew with $10,000, we would be able to take care of 10 caregivers for a whole year. And it sounded crazy from November 20th to December 31st to raise $10,000. Well, the donors went bananas. <laughs> December 31st, we had 15000 $138, no, $136.30 from donors. So we are able to take care of more than 10 <clears throat> families right now. And anybody in here that's donated, thank you so much. Online, if you donated, thank you so much because that money is really going to go towards helping these caregivers. And that's the tagline. We want to care for the caregiver. And part of the care um, is we're going to help with some membership services. And I'll let John talk about the membership services. We're partnering up with Charlotte Village Network and with um, um, the Senior Community Connections, which Senior Community Connections and Charlotte Village Network do the same services. They're just in different parts of the city. So if you are in Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, you will. we will be partnering you up with Senior Community Connections. So anybody in that area, make sure you get one of these. Anybody, did you, I know you're up in that area. We got one, okay. So, and then if you're Charlotte, Matthews, Mint Hill, um, what's? West side of town, yeah. just north, north, north of the city, anywhere in the Charlotte area. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to John, and John will explain the services that they they help with caregivers. We will be actually granting the money for their membership services. So I'll turn it over to John and let him tell you all about the Charlotte Village Network. Thanks, Manitra. Um, my name is John Ryder. Uh, I'm the director of Charlotte Village Network. Uh, we and Senior Community Connections are pretty much the same 
same type of organization. We're nonprofits. <clears throat> Our mission is to help seniors stay in their home as long as they can by providing volunteer services and socialization, which is just as important. A uh, little bit of history about our organization. In fact, both of our organizations are about the same age. We both started in 2018. Uh, <coughs> when we went live in 2018. Um, our uh, organization started uh, putting things together in 2015. It took a few years to get every all our ducks in a row. Um, we are part of a national movement. We have a national organization in St. Louis called Village to Village. Uh, their website is vtb.org. Uh, and what they offer us is uh, guidance and advice and resources. But they don't they don't really have any ruling power over us. We're all our own independent entities. There are probably about 260 or 70 organizations like us around the country. And last, last I looked, there were, I think, 10, 10 to 12 in North Carolina alone. Um, and our, all our, our mission is all the same, to help seniors stay in their home as long as they can. So we're really, you know, uh, my counterpart, Shanna, up in Davidson, where Senior Community Connection started, we're really excited to partner with Frankie May because not only can we help seniors, we can also help the caregivers by giving them some time to do what they need to do, to rest their care, you know, whatever. Um, so what what we offer are uh, volunteer services. We're both both our organizations are pretty much volunteer based. Uh, we offer transportation to medical appointments, social events, um, grocery shopping, wherever you know wherever somebody needs to go. Uh, Technology assistance with computers and cell phones, because we, we all know they don't come with an owner's manual. Um, companionship visits, uh, daily check-in phone calls. Um, you know, we'll even come out and do some light in-home repairs, light housekeeping, even some light yard work. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We had a gentleman who lived over in Mint Hill. He would have us come out and trim his hedges a few times a year. So, you know, we'll do stuff like that. We we can't we don't have the resources to come out and cut the grass every week, but you know, we'll trim hedges, rake leaves, if a storm blows through, we can come by and pick up sticks that have fallen from the trees, stuff like that. Um, we have a grocery pickup and delivery service for folks. Uh, and you know, the list of Things we can do is endless. We're, you know, we're always looking for ideas for to enhance our services. In fact, uh, when we started, as this couple joined, and we hadn't really thought about it, but but they asked if we could come and pick up their groceries. You know, go to the, go to Harris Tea or pick them up and drop them off at their home. So we started doing that, and that was that was a big success. Um, but just as important as the volunteer services we provide is the socialization as well. You know, the, a lot of our folks, they don't have any family or friends in town. So, you know, they're all by themselves and they need to be around other folks. Um, loneliness and isolation can take a physical as well as mental toll on people. <clears throat> There's some crazy statistic and I don't know who came up with it or how they figured it, but lo being lonely and isolated was had the same effect as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I don't I don't know how they came up with that. But anyhow, it you know it's really really takes a toll on you. So as part of our organization and Davidson, or I mean Senior Community Connections as well, we offer different social events and outings. So. We, you know, we have a monthly lunch and learn, which can be one of two things. Either just a little social gathering of folks to get to know each other and just socialize, or sometimes we'll have a, a speaker who will give a talk or presentation on a topic that's relevant to seniors. Um, 
you know, we've had the Charlotte police come out before and do a seminar on fraud awareness and um, safety. Uh, we've had an elder law attorney come out and, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about what kind of documents you need to have prepared and things like that. Uh, had a, there's a couple organizations in town that do um, home organizing, you know, helping you downsize if you're moving from a big house to a small place. They'll come in and do that. We've had them come out. Uh, you know, a woman I know who owns a uh, durable medical equipment company, he's given a talk. So just different things like that. Uh, we have a monthly board game day, and that's on a Saturday afternoon. And a bunch of folks get together and some play board games for three hours. That's, I'll tell you, that's a lot of fun. I, I go to those all the time because it's just a good crowd and they laugh and have fun. And, um, but we also have different outings. So we've gone up to the Lazy Five Ranch. I don't know if anybody's ever been up there. That's a that's a cool place. We had a group, took them up and got on one of the horse-drawn wagons. That was a lot of fun. We've gone to the Billy Graham Library, uh, UNCC Botanical Gardens. Um, back in October, we went down to the Windy Hill Orchard down in York. That was that was a good time. Um, we also, in the middle of December, we have a we do an annual holiday light tour. So what we do is we get a bunch of volunteers who will drive folks around in cars, and we just drive around the different neighborhoods looking at all the holiday lights. Displays. That's a lot of fun. And then after that, we end up going to a pizza place for pizza. So, you know, just different things like that to keep folks engaged with others. It, it just it means so much to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, during the during the pandemic in 2020, it was a little rough because we had to pretty much do everything virtually. So we were. We were still able to do the lunch and learn. We still did the game day, you know, through a through a Zoom call. It was a little bit of a challenge, and some of the folks don't use technology. So, what we did is we started um, delivering little treats out to them every month, and you know, we we drop them off and then you know just stand stand apart and just chat with them for a few minutes, see how they were doing. One of the other things we did, we have a, a daily check-in phone call if somebody wants it. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, when that started, we decided to call everybody at least a couple times a week. And just, you know, check in, you know, see how they were doing, see if they needed anything. Um, just stuff like that to, to help them out. Um, then, once everybody had been, once they had all gotten their vaccinations, we... Um, they were all after us. Why don't we get back together? Are we meet in person again. So last year in April, we had a our first out, outdoor get together. It was at the uh, Winghaven Gardens and Bird Sanctuary. That's a that's a neat place. So we're down the street from Queens University. And then, you know, as the year went on, we you know resumed our in person things. Um, so we're. We're continuing on with that this year. Uh, you know, we we want to uh, entertain even more ideas for different different types of outings. We've talked about Daniel's going off to Daniel Stowe. Um, you know, even even some historical things. Uh, I have a friend who knows a whole lot about Charlotte history. He he wants to give a talk to our folks about that. Um, so. That's that's pretty much what we do. Um, as I said, all our all our folks are volunteers. Uh, we do vet them. We do background checks on everybody. Uh, if they're driving, we look at their driving record. Uh, you know, we require they have uh, their own insurance. You know, a, a deep, a good car. You know, all that stuff. We do have a, an umbrella policy, insurance policy over them. Just in case, you know, their insurance isn't enough. But we 
knock on wood never had to never had to rely on that. So so that's that's who we are. That's what we do. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, um, you know, we're really happy to partner with Frankie May because we can help uh, caregivers as well, giving them a little free time or you know time away to do whatever they need to do. So um, and senior community connections, they're they're up in the Davidson Cornelius area, Huntersville. Uh, they're pretty much the same as our organization. So um, great folks. Uh, and I think that's that's about it, unless anybody has any questions. I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm looking at the map on the back of your brochure, and you service areas 28205, 28211, so it's like South Boulevard all the way up, but it does not include like Old Pine Hill Road. So my dad is actually five miles on the other side of Old Pine Hill Road. So what services do you recommend in that area? When I work a full-time job and then take care of my dad as well. Well, that I will I will tell you that's um, that is our original service area. When we started up, we we need to. In fact, we our board's talking about um, changing the brochures for that. But we'll we'll go pretty much anywhere in the city. Uh, our model. For Charlotte Village Network is called a hub and spoke. So what that means is Charlotte Village Network's the hub. Um, our idea is to expand out into different neighborhoods. <clears throat> For example, we've been working with a group up in Reedy Creek, the Reedy Creek Park area, to get get a um, spoke going up there. So they they would come in under our umbrella, so they wouldn't have to go through all the administrative stuff to get started up. We are, we've already done that. Um, the, only, the only stipulation we're making with them is they need to have some volunteers up in that area to help with the coverage. So, you know, I, I don't want to ask somebody who lives in South Charlotte to drive all the way up there, you know. So that's something we can talk about, possibly um, getting getting something started up in your area where your dad is. Okay. So this is like two eight two seven thing is like right there on the line mm -hmm. of the area. Yeah, and and this you know we like this this doesn't really include Matthews or Mint Hill or or west of South Boulevard. We do have some folks in those areas that we that we help. Um, you know, like I said, we we need to. Change that map as because that was our original service area. And if you're not at that point, if you have any other resources that you can recommend, that would be helpful. So he's actually a two year cancer survivor patient. He's 82. Okay. And um, with the Cancer Society, they actually would used to they used to come out and pick him up and take him to the chemo and the radiation treatment. Mm -hmm. Now that he's not with that, I just extended that if a patient asked if they would come and help take him back and forth to the doctor's appointment. So they don't do that anymore due to COVID. So it's like I'm just trying to grasp for any type of resources that I can get out there for him instead of putting him in an Uber and taking him and bringing him back. Yeah, so, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well why don't why don't we talk a little later and I'll get your email and okay. because that's that's one other service I forgot to mention. We we're a not we both of our organizations are non medical, so we don't do any kind of home health care. But we know there are umpteen home health agencies around town. We have relationships with some of them. You know, we can recommend those. Um, you know, other resources, plumbers, electricians, you know, stuff like that. You know, the the type of services that our volunteers don't have the the time or the tools or the expertise to do. And with, with those organizations, what we ask of them is they offer our members at least a 10% discount on their services. And we also vet them as well through the Better Business Bureau and uh, direct referrals. So why don't we talk afterwards? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've talked about several things like 
the volunteer piece of it. Mm -hmm. So are these volunteers or are these people that actually come out um, as health people, or not so much health people? But, but share a little bit about when you say volunteers, and then you talk about respite. So I wanted to understand that piece of it. And then how long would it take to get the assistance that we need? In order, or, and do you come out to visit the people before you do all of, all of that? But I need to just talk a little bit about that service of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so yeah, what, what we do is, you know, um, we have a, we'll have an application. Um, once we receive that, we will contact a prospective member or or the caregiver. <clears throat> and we do like to come out to their home and do a little interview. Just to, you know, get to know them, get to know us, uh, you know, find out what kind of services they're interested in. And, you know, make sure that we're a good fit. Uh, we want to be able to provide what we say we can do. We don't, we don't want to, you know, waste, waste anyone's time. You know, it, and most of the time it's a, it works, it's a good fit. Once in a while, you know, it's, it's not so much. Um, one thing I will say, we, with our folks, we, because our volunteers are not trained medically, folks have to be able to, like if they're getting a ride somewhere, they have to be able to come out under their own power, get in someone's car, be able to get out and, you know, with with little to no assistance. <clears throat> that being said, you know, we have some members who use walkers and rollators, and that's that's not an issue. You know, they can fold up and go in the back seat or go in the trunk. Uh, we even have had a lady who uh, used a wheelchair to get from her house out to the car. She could get up out of it, get in the car, and it was just a matter of holding the wheelchair up. So they have to be. They would have to do that. Oh no, the volunteer would would put the put whatever device in the, in their car for them. But they but they need pretty to be pretty mobile. Okay? Just because we we're we're a non medical non medical uh, organization. So if a person is blind, and then then that wouldn't work in a sense. If I'm understanding, um, but do you have the rest of the piece where they can come in in the home? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> I will say we do have a member who is blind, and and we, you know, we take him places. Um, you know, he he's pretty, you know, able to get get around pretty good actually. But you know, that's something that doesn't really matter because we can we can accommodate that. Um, as far as the respite goes, what what we can do is come out and you know sit for a couple hours with someone, uh, you know even take them somewhere just <laughs> just to give the caregiver a chance to go home and take a nap or go run their own errands or take care of their own business. So that's that's why we were excited to partner with Vinitra because. As well as helping the seniors, this also can help the caregivers by giving them a little relief. Does that, does that answer your questions? So you call them members. You call who, you call who members? Is that or, our, our seniors, we call them members. Or, you know, if a the, if the caregiver signs up for their parents, they're, they would be considered a member as well. It's, yeah. a, it's a monthly membership. Oh. And Frankie Mae Foundation will be granting that monthly membership. So you, as the caregiver, your family, you're going to get a family membership, and the Frankie Mae Foundation will be paying that membership on your behalf. Uh, right. Yes, ma'am. So I have an aunt that's with me. She's she's from Augusta, Georgia, but she's come you know, from time to time, and then I'll go back with her. Um, would that be an issue? It, uh, would she qualify for the program because she's from out, she doesn't primarily live in Charlotte. She lives in Augusta. Mm -hmm. 
but she's here with me. Yeah, when when she's visiting, I, I don't I don't see any problem with that. Okay. I don't see any problem with that. Okay. So you said with the monthly membership, how often do churches be using the membership? Good question. Okay, so <clears throat> as far as the transportation piece goes, we have well, let me back up a little bit. We have two two different memberships, an individual for one person and a household for like so, transportation-wise, the an individual is eligible for up to six rides a month. You know, pretty much anywhere in the county they need to go. No matter, you know, no matter what it's for, it doesn't, that doesn't matter to us. How about distance? A couple would be ten, ten per month. Distance is pretty much any anywhere in Mecklenburg County or Charlotte Village network. I can't, I can't speak for senior. And that's something I can check with Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check with Shannon on that. Okay. Um, as far as like companionship, depending on volunteer availability, probably one to two times a week. Uh, you know, help help around the house. Same same thing. Uh, I had a, I talked to a lady yesterday who was interested in um, her mom joining. She was inquiring about helping her with laundry. So, we what we would do with that is um, probably one to one to two loads of laundry for a, for a visit. You know, it, you know, it's we want to be respectful of our volunteers' time as well. And I, with our volunteers, I I tell them I don't ask them to commit to something on a regular basis unless they want to, with the exception of the check-in calls, check-in phone calls. You know, I, I kind of want to have them call on a regular basis, you know. If you're calling somebody Monday, well, call, please try and call every Monday. But, mm -hmm. you know, because they have their own lives as well and have stuff going on and, you know, so I, I, we try to be as flexible as we can with the volunteers. So, that that answer your question. So, on average, about how many hours a week? And is it similar between the two? Yes. <clears throat> so, I think you had mentioned, and I think that was your question, four to six hours a week? Yeah, roughly. And um, now that now that the Frankie May Foundation is 501c3 certified, I will start applying for grants. And so with these grants, we will be expanding our services as well. Since the volunteers, as John mentioned, aren't health care workers, I'm going to start applying for grants for that specific piece. I want to be able to send some home health care um, agencies into homes. So if you all know any grants that I can apply for, by all means, please email me, text me, whatever. But that's that's the next piece I want to get to. I want to be able to provide somebody to come and sit in the house for eight hours and they can help with showering and clothing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's that's great, great idea. Yeah. Yeah. so that's the next step. But for right now, we are just, you know, we're granting the memberships for um, the Charlotte Village Network. And then also, in addition to all the services that John will, John's uh, agency will be providing, Frankie May Foundation will also have a monthly meetup once a month that we would just do something fun for the caregivers. All you have to do is show up. We'll make sure we have food. Uh, we're going to do some fun activities. We got a sip and paint lined up. We got, um, what else, a tea lined up. So every month, starting in March, we will have a monthly meetup for caregivers. All you need to do is just show up. We'll have the supplies ready. We'll have the food ready. We just want y'all to show up and not worry about caregiving for at least two or three hours on a Saturday. And I'll start getting that information out. I have everybody's email uh, on that on the sign up sheet, so I will be emailing you uh, with the monthly. And I, what I what I'm going to try to do is just have a calendar for the whole year set up, and so you'll know what's coming up, and then we'll have. Um, registration so I'll know you know how many people 
will show up. But what I what I'd like for you all to do is um, just spread the word. And follow us on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Uh, just follow us. Rico and I do uh, Talk About It Tuesdays mm -hmm. on Facebook on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. So if you all are on Facebook, get on Facebook. And Connie will help me with getting a YouTube channel set up and all that stuff. So for right now, we're just <laughs> on, on Facebook. So follow us on social media. Uh, we have I have some applications here. And I know a lot, a uh, few of you have already filled out the application online for services. We'll go through those and get get some more information if we need that. And then if we have anybody that wants to volunteer for the Frankie May Foundation, and if John, if anybody wants to volunteer for John's organization, uh, because we're going to have to do a background check as well. So if anybody wants to volunteer for the Frankie May Foundation, what that will look like. Um, when we have the monthly meetups, if I can have someone to come and help me set up the food or get the supplies together or whatever that is. And then in addition, I know your people will be calling, but if anybody from Frankie Mae wants to call or go visit or do whatever, you know, I, I'd like to have some volunteers on our end as well. So if anybody is interested in volunteering, we have applications here, have some brochures here and some business cards here. Um, so I think that's it. Any, any, any other questions? I have one question. Um, my grandmother, she's living with um, my husband and I, and she was diagnosed with dementia. And I have her going to the West Charlotte Center on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays just to kind of get her out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, but with her living with me, I mean, we're handling the washing, the doing all of those things. So for me, would you be able to, like, she likes to ride. She likes to go to the dollar store and pick up peppermint and things like that. And she's able to do those things. Um, she likes to go and get ice cream. So would that be something that your agency could do? Because that would, like, give me about an hour. <laughs> 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 that hour. Did that hour sit like down? Hour. <laughs> you know, um... Because I mean, my I mean, my family. We pretty much we, my daughter and my brother. They're very helpful. If I need to like come here, um, you know, go to church or things, things like that. It's just those things where I need some peppermint. I need this. I need that. You know, just to somebody else to kind of. I mean, she she she's sociable. It's just yeah. she just has some dementia right now. Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, that's that's absolutely. That's, that's pretty fine. much all I need. I just yeah. need somebody to just kind of. <laughs> one, one thing about the transportation, we we ask that folks try to give us a week's notice. Okay. Um, and with you know with medical appointments, everybody knows a couple weeks down the road what you're going to be. Stuff does come up at the last minute. Mm -hmm. If it does, we absolutely try to find someone. It just you know it just depends on the volunteers. Ability. So I can kind of like schedule a trip for yeah, maybe a week or two in advance. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be a whole week. You know, okay. three, 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 at least three days. Okay. okay. And then, you know, we, you know, can find somebody <laughs> within that. Time. Okay. All right. Okay. But but at last minute stuff, we will we will try just okay. based on what the volunteers are doing. I can't right. guarantee somebody will be able to. Right. Okay. Now, I know this one thing. Um, I have my own catering business on the side, but I put that aside because I have to take care of dad. Um, what I do now is I go over before work, fix breakfast, prep lunch, get off from work, come and cook dinner. Is there any type of relief that maybe possibly once a week somebody can go and maybe do a lunch or just make sure he has lunch? Um, or maybe, I don't care if it's to go to Walmart and pick up Chicory chicken, or just, or at a salad place or something. Do you do one of the organizations offer that service? Yeah, I, I would think we. Or even something like friendship trains <coughs> that actually deliver the meals at the house. They drop them off. I don't know if you know about that, but I did oh, yeah. some research yeah. on that as well. So yeah. for me, that's like golden. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you start your morning at six a.m. They'll go to bed at 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. And start it all back over again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then yeah. Saturday is like 
running around in and cleaning up. So, I think it'll be a little bit different. Between us and friendship trees, that would be. Okay. And that's where volunteers, I, you know, I need some volunteers <coughs> on Frankie May Foundation in as well. I'm going to put myself in. I need to sign up for your volunteers too because you need to do a background check on me too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask Rico. He might. I was about to offer. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's where volunteers really, really come into play. You know, we just we need mm -hmm. some volunteers to do do those type things, run errands, drop some food off, or do whatever. So right. please, please, please spread the word if, if anybody is volunteering. And what I want to do again, if anybody wants to, where's my volunteer? This one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. yeah. I can't even see. I have some too. Volunteer applications, and what I want to do is, um, I want to do like a Zoom meeting in the next few weeks for um, whoever wants to volunteer. And again, like John said, we have to do uh, a background check. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, volunteer applications. Just get yeah. So please, please, please volunteer. Please spread the word. Please follow us on social media, and plug. We will take donations as well today too. So we have Cash App, we have Venmo, we have PayPal, we have uh, Cash. So. <laughs> never turn that. Never yeah. say no I need, uh, I guess, contact or resource. Um, we are looking for, and you may know someone, I mean, we're in the need of rails because the house that we currently live in, we don't have railing for her. Um, and we have like two small steps and then a big step. And it's becoming difficult for her to kind of, you know, step up. And I'm looking for someone um, just a resource where maybe I could possibly get some type of railing um, for her to be able to step on and off the steps when she's going to her bus. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I know a gentleman in Matthews. He um, has a durable medical equipment company. It's okay. called Mobility and More. I can, I can give you his info. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then also I forgot to mention too, on our website, uh, get on our website, there's a resources page. And thanks to my sister, who has taken over the website because I had no idea about building the websites or any of that stuff, but she built the website for us and there's a page on there, a resources page, okay. and just go and look at any resources. And again, text me, call me, whatever, and um, if you have John's information. Yeah. And we have business cards up yep. here. Okay. So yeah. between the two of us, and then like I said, for the people up in Northern Mecklenburg County, <clears throat> If I can't answer it, I'll check with Shanna. She's the executive director there. She had other plans today, but she did send brochures for their agency. Okay. Um, I want to I want to commend your sister. I, I went through your website <laughs> extensively, like you told me. <laughs> and the resources about Medicaid, I am getting some feedback on that. So oh, thank yeah, you very thank much. You. That thank you. That's another work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was telling you, I was like, listen, I don't know about a website, can you please? And she did. She got on there and got links on there and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, by all means, get on get on the website. I guess one quick question for me, because uh, we've been working with my father for a couple of years. And so, um, and I'm sure everybody's thinking about a lot like this. How quickly can we get some relief? as far as some help and support, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then if your funds run out to do grants and all of that, how much is your fee so that way we can see if that's something that we can afford, if that may happen? Okay, yeah, so so our, our two memberships are, it's yearly, but we have people who pay it yearly, quarterly, monthly. An individual's 500 a year, a household's 800 a year, which breaks down to roughly $42 a month and 67 a month. Um, and Frankie I, May, I'm sorry, Frankie May Foundation will be doing a year. We will pay for a year. After that year, you will have to reapply. 
that we will cover a year. So, and, and I will tell you, probably a third of our members we fully sponsor because they're on such a limited income. Mm -hmm. So we don't want money to ever be a barrier to, to receiving help from mm -hmm. us. And, and those folks, in my opinion, need it even more because they can't afford to hire different services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, there, there's, there's a way to, to get help. And um, I'm doing the paper volunteer forms because I didn't think about uh, putting it on the website, but I talked to my sister yesterday. So if you know anybody, how long, about next week, it'll be, a, would it be? Oh, yeah. So if any if you know anybody that wants to sign up to volunteer, we'll have it on just like we have the application for services. We'll have a volunteer application online as well, so they can just get on and fill it out, and then um, we're paying for the background checks and all that stuff. So. Sorry, student loans. Yeah. Well, we don't really have an age limit. Um, you know, we've had some high school students inquire. What needs to happen with that is their their parents need to sign off on the volunteer application and the background check. So, you know, because they are minors, the, both their parents need to sign off. Yeah, because I know high school students do have some classes yeah. that they need volunteer hours for. And with us drivers, our drivers need to be because of their insurance. So, but but the other things, as long as their folks sign off on them, they can help. And sometimes I think, like you know, younger, like the 16, 17, 18 year olds, with with a caregiver. I mean, with with an older person. Because when I was at when my mom was at Gracious Living. They had um, the students from Davidson Day and somewhere else, and they would come in to Gracious Living and just have the best time with with the, with the participants at Gracious Living. So, yeah, we've um, the last let's see three last three no last four semesters we um, partnered with the gerontology department at UNCC for a couple of interns. Um, so. We've had a couple interns each semester helping us with different things, uh, whether it's social media, because I don't know anything about it either, or, you know, just any other type of thing. One of the other things they, one of the other programs they had was uh, over the 10 week term, they had students engage with seniors an hour each week on a phone call or a Zoom call, whichever. Just which just to kind of sort of an intergenerational thing to kind of learn about each other and learn each other's perspectives on the world and that that's really really been a nice nice thing uh, you know some of our folks still keep in touch with some of the students so that's a that's another another thing we can do as well. And he mentioned about um, social media stuff. I don't know if you all saw, but I posted, I am looking for a volunteer to help with social media posting. So if you all know anybody, I just, my mental capacity right now is just <laughs> trying to keep up with my personal stuff and keep up with Frankie Mae Foundation, social media, and all that. So if y'all know anybody that would volunteer to help me with that, I would really appreciate that. And we, you know, I'm going to, um, Cynthia Hancock's the, uh, Head of the gerontology department at UNCC, I might introduce you to her through email because okay. they, you know, next term they might be able to, if you want to. Yes. 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 Okay. Do they? Okay. All right. Yes. So send me some resources, please. Please. Oh, and we have a ton of food left. My sister has found some oil. Um, to put on top, so please take some of this pasta and some of these browns. Any other, anybody have any other questions, comments? You know, anything? How are y'all geared towards finding more caregivers? Because the majority of the caregivers that are just taking the 
yes. in home, so it's hard for them to come out to these type of events. How do you, and everyone does do social media, but I think, I'm not a caregiver currently, but in my time of when I was a caregiver, to do something like this, yes, I would love to, but my ultimate thought in the back of my mind is like, what am I going to do um, to be able to participate in this event? So personally, I suggest thinking about a way to really reach out to those caregivers that don't interact or have access. And I've spoken with um, Tara, I've talked to Michelle Aldridge <coughs> at okay. Precious Living to try to figure out mm -hmm. how to get mm -hmm. to these caregivers mm -hmm. if they aren't on social media, um, like word of mouth. But right. other than like social mm -hmm. media, I had no clue. So I had to reach out to Michelle and I was like, please reach out to some of your participants yeah. families to let them know what we're offering so if you i mean i don't know you can also do zoom too yeah uh, but I, then because a lot of caregivers can't come out yes i had two that wasn't able to come out because they was taking care of it and and what i what i'd like to do too this is another thing uh with the volunteers let the people that wanted to come today and couldn't come if, if you know we had some volunteers ahead of time that could come and sit with them so the caregivers could come could come so you know we just I'm, I'm trying to broaden that that volunteer base to be able to to send some volunteers to sit and even if you if you don't have social media like um instagram or facebook most people have internet so you can at least access youtube right. so we'll be working on that youtube channel for you yes. But there's, I would like to take some of your flyers back with me. Um, I actually started a, this is funny, I actually started a caregiving dinner I used to do every quarter. I would make, I started with five people, five seniors in my neighborhood, my dad's neighborhood. So how I started it out was he would sit on the porch and he'd say, you know what I want? I want me some turkey necks and rice. <laughs> so the um, senior lady across the street heard him. So she came on. She's like, you gonna make me some too? So I started out with five seniors just on his street. So actually, since three months ago, I hadn't did it in about eight months now. But I used to do it every other month. I would fix meals for the caregivers and the seniors and deliver them out on Saturday. And I would have my dad in the car with me. So he would like hand me a plate. They would come out and get the plate. But I haven't did it in so long. So my thing is, if you give me flyers, and I can do a work of about a mouth, put them in the middle. So right now, I have about 20 seniors in the neighborhood of Winston that I haven't been able to reach back out to because my plate has gotten a little full of that. Mm -hmm. But if you have flyers, I'll sure drop them off in the middle. Absolutely. So what day are you making those trippy next time? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Mm -hmm. Pretty much asking my question. Because my wife, <laughs> oh God, um, we love our grandmother, but she is a handful. You preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Some days, you know, you can take her, and some days you're like, can we just sit outside on the floor? So we, she needs that outlet. Yeah. She needs that outlet. I'm there, but sometimes my ears might, might not be enough. Mm -hmm. So she needs to be able to, somebody who's lived it and can just be able to vent mm -hmm. and get other ideas of how to handle the situation. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna set that up. But, you, but you know, they can't if they're able. They can go to the rec centers because I used to work at the rec center for the nutrition programs. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's something that they can do. You know, she said with Charlotte, and we have one at uh, Betty Ray Southview. It's, it's about five or six senior uh, sites, mm -hmm. and they're usually about from like ten to two, so uh, somewhere in that particular area. So they get lunch. And uh, and then they talk and they play different little games and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause matter of fact, cause I used to be the uh, director at West Charlotte eons ago, and um, uh, we um, also had some of our children come over there because we did the arts program, and we kind of interact with with those seniors mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that's an outing that's kind of free, but you got to fill the application and all that kind of stuff. So if she's able to do that, cause we have one or two people that's blind that goes to that site. And, um, and if they able to walk, sometimes they provide transportation. I'm not sure all about that, but you can probably talk with the person who's there, and she will tell you more about that senior nutrition program. But that works really well for a lot of our seniors too. Yeah, because Mama, when, when Mama was still, when Mama was first diagnosed, she was still very high functioning. Mm -hmm. One thing she could drive, but other than that, and she used to go to the um, Huntersville Park and Rec, the senior center up in Huntersville, and. Yeah. She would, I would uh, she would go there a couple of days a week for a few hours, so that mm -hmm. is a good, good resource as well. Mm -hmm. And um, Tara is uh, uh, retired from the Department of Social Services, so she is a wealth of knowledge and information too. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We want some food stamps. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> centers to coordinate activities? If, if you want someone to come once a week or whatever, John is the point of contact. We're just, we're just, yes, Shana, we're just right. paying, paying for the services. But again, we will be, we will have volunteers, so if, if something comes up and you like, listen, I need you to call, listen, I need, you, I need to get out next Tuesday, can somebody come Have some volunteers that can step into. Yeah, between the three organizations, somebody will be able to to take care of whatever it is. So, how often are weekly events like this? These will. Um, I'm thinking maybe quarterly. Mm -hmm. Some quarterly events like this to get the word out to get more people. But we will definitely be having the monthly, but I think quarterly would be a good idea to have these information sessions. Brian, Rand, Richard, and y'all, y'all quiet. Y'all have any questions or comments? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? I guess I'm, I'm thinking of ways to, to volunteer to be a blessing and are a lot of people that are caregivers, are you all married or just single? Single? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I was just thinking, and if you don't mind me asking, um, Team Coffee, or would y'all, is that something you would be interested in if, if somebody could offer a service to bless you? Yes. <laughs> it's like, just, like a, just like a date night or something. Is that something you would be interested in? 
We had somebody come every other Saturday for eight hours. Mm-hmm. The first time we we went to the furniture store. <laughs> 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 we had to find something to right, do yeah. just to get out of the house. Okay, you have to keep that connection, and that's why I love Team Dean. And it's like, <laughs> just just want everybody to be able to keep that connection because I know you're trying to do the right thing, but you still need to have that time too. So yeah. I'm just trying to find a way to bless you. Okay, that's it. Thanks. I care for my mother, and I'm a primary caregiver. I have two brothers, and I'm trying to figure out how to help them changed my nonprofit to a for-profit because there were levels of things that I wanted to be able to be a voice for, mm-hmm. the experience that I experienced. Mm-hmm. So every time I've done something, I've tried to base it around a date that means something. Mm-hmm. And it was my mother's, I think, birthday. And I stated, I'm originally from Wilmington, North Carolina. I moved to Charlotte with my dementia mother um, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. She passed away seven years ago. 2014, either way. So I happened to be on social media. It was her birthday coming up, and I said, you know, I do a lot of my work with my family and friends in Wilmington. I really don't interact in Charlotte because Mm -hmm. everybody knows me there. They know my experience. They know what I've um, try to enforce and do, so they always call on me. So I built a a legacy of connection from my hometown. Mm-hmm. But I made the statement on social media: I wish that I knew a caregiver that I could bless. Mm-hmm. And I knew Wallace, and he immediately put Benita's name on my page, and I reached out to her immediately. Mm-hmm. It was just a small gesture, mm-hmm. and not that. Um, my background financially amidst me, but I had to follow the spirit. Yeah. And so I immediately reached out to her and I told her I wanted to honor someone that was doing that I, what I had currently had done. And I sent her a gift card. I said, go to lunch. And I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward into when she started the foundation, I was like, wow, this is so great. But I just had made the decision about changing the dynamic of what I wanted to do and moving forward. And so Vanessa and I have been friends 
weeks before. Since my time of being here in Charlotte. And so we talked back and forth and we like, and I have so many caregivers that contact me because of my experience in Wilmington, but not here in Charlotte. And so I say certain things to her and we kind of go back and forth and I've taken her to Wilmington with me to do an assessment on my uncle as well as my godmother. Both of them now have passed away. So we built a memoir on what we do and how we do. Um and coming here today, I was just like, I was talking to my daughter, I said, I don't want to impose on what she's got going on, but I know I have to go and be present and be a part, so I called her up this morning, I said, you going? She said, yeah. I said, because one of us got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so if you're going, um, and I'm, you know, there we are, grandma, grandma duty, my daughter had to go to work, so I was like, okay, I'm going to take you away, but I got a choice. She was like, okay, okay, okay. And just then listening to you all's stories and comments, I started looking at Vanessa when the gentleman back there was talking about his mom and his dementia. And I was like, that's why we're here. Yeah, we're here. To be able to open up and tell people, you're not alone. Yeah. You're not alone. You're not there alone. Help. You're yeah. not alone. There yeah. is help. Um, and there will be times to where, as when you suggested about the bending, like you do, you have to bend out and mm -hmm. not be so prideful of what's going on in your life because that's why. I've gotten to be where I am. I don't mind telling my story. Mm -hmm. And I take off every layer of who I am to help someone else. Yeah. Because I know that what I went through was just for this purpose. Mm -hmm. So like Vanessa said, anything that we can do to assist the you know, the foundation or anybody is just what we're supposed to do. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily about the title or entitlement. Right. It's about the work that needs to be done to help yeah. that next character. Absolutely. From caregiver to caregiver, um, we extend ourselves. <laughs>
and to him it just sounds like a normal voice. Right. So, right. But, yeah. so it's mm -hmm. sort of. It, it, you, you, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand it if you're not in a setting to know that you think that you're doing something wrong, right. but it's actually what needs to be done. I had a hard time with my mother, Evie. She would do what they call a ship monster. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know who I was around. But they said change the color of her plate because mm -hmm. she's confused with what she's seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so I changed my black color plate and the chip mm -hmm. Just little stuff. Just little yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, yeah. I mean, Michelle, like where she's living, she helped me out a lot with yeah. little stuff like that too. Stuff you just don't know. Yeah. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. you just don't know. This was good. Yeah. Really yeah. good. So we're going to start doing workshops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, talk about it Tuesday. I, I, I need to catch up with y'all and hop on and talk about it Tuesday. Okay. Well, we've been doing 10 o'clock a.m. We did 6 p.m. because we thought oh, we were having connectivity issues. But I'm thinking if we can, we might do a day and a and an evening because some people just can't hop on during the day. You hear that, sir? <laughs> 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 Welcome, Linda, English. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Now. Yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. Um, Sometimes you can. What I've done by myself to well, it's, it's eight in my family, but it's only so many of us to help my father. And uh, so what I did, I started writing. And so now I have two books out and working on two more. So sometimes you can just start writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to pass a couple of these around. And uh, one of my books is called Shift Happens. And the other one is Stay Focused. <laughs> and, and pronounce that word right. That's a nice play on word, Thank <laughs> you. 